Greetings everyone, this is Kate Baker and I just want to share with you my global collaboration project. I worked with a student teacher from Saskatchewan, Canada. Sarah Butko attends the University of Regina, uh, participating in Dean Shersky's class and she interacted with my students on Edmodo. And I'm going to give you a quick behind the scenes tour of our work together. To first get to know Ms. Butko, I posted on Edmodo to our main classroom groups this note stating about how we have big news and then we have a video from Ms. Butko that gave us um, a tour of Saskatchewan, her schools, and a brief biographical sketch about her. And as you can see from my students, they were very excited and giving her a nice hearty southern welcome. And as you can see, Ms. Butchko is also excited to hang out with my students as well via Google Hangout. After posting the video to the classes and giving them an opportunity to meet Sarah via Google Hangout, she then created a quiz with five questions based on content found in the video and assigned it to my classes. And prior to assigning the quiz, Sarah and I work together to craft the questions and talk about what is appropriate for this type of assignment. Using a collaborative Google Doc, Sarah drafted 10 questions with which she could ask the students based on the assignment of viewing the video. And we discussed this talking about how in the comment section here, ways in which she could pare this down a little bit and how, what style she would want these questions to be asked in. Should they be fill in the blank? Should they be multiple choice? Um, and what would be the best strategy for assessing the students? Since she is a pre-service teacher, this was something completely new to her that she could see the other side of things and now know how to look at it from a teacher perspective. And as you can see from our comments, we had quite a lively discussion going back and forth. And the shared Google Doc is an excellent tool for that process of learning. You can see this is my typing here to her to think about the format of the questions. Um, what style do you want them to be in? Multiple choice, true, false. What are the benefits and caveats of each? And again, what were her expectations for the quiz? Because as we take a look at student results, we have a mixed bag of performance. We have some that scored very well, and then we have a number of students who did not score well, scoring maybe a one out of eight and low various numbers. And what we did was Sarah and I talked about what is the most appropriate way to score this and why were there such a variation in scores with the average score being about 76%. And we found that there was a pattern. While most students got the multiple choice questions correct and the open-ended correct, where they struggled was with the fill in the blank because using the Edmodo quiz grader, Fill in the blanks have to be exact. While Samuel here is technically correct, Saskatchewan is technically the province where she is located. The name of the town is what we were looking for. And for some students, they actually gave us both, Saskatoon, comma, Saskatchewan. But technically, because Sarah in the answer key had designated Saskatoon as the only correct answer, that is the way that the computer scored it. As again you can see here from Savannah's answer. So for this quiz students were took a look at the question and as we look at the demographic the quiz breakdown we can see where did they struggle the most it was with the fill in the blank. But this provided her with a really good opportunity to talk about what is the expectation as a teacher what is the expectation of a student when taking this quiz? And how does that translate over to grading and scoring? Especially when you're using technology, you can't give partial credit for these, multi for these fill in the blank ones that were marked wrong. Whereas you can give partial credit for open-ended responses. And 
What I really like too is that Sarah, not only did she give partial credit, but then she gave comments as to um, asking probing questions, trying to get more out of the students in replying back and forth. Trying to connect to the theme of the literature that we were studying this marking period, uh, which was Homer's The Odyssey, Miss Buchko also created a travel video and posted it for students to watch. And then we asked, it, asked the students for participation, reply with their thoughts, their reactions, maybe even ask questions about the trip. So we have some great questions asking about the difference in temperature between Montana and Canada. What was your favorite trip to Montana? Uh, we even had students who we didn't tell them to do this, but here we have Mora who made a good connection between Miss Buchko's journey and Odysseus's journey. Um, that they both got lost at one point or another. And it was nice to see them transfer that knowledge and connect it between these two um, travel stories. And with the video aspect of it, being able to see the journey made it come alive more so than what they might have read in the text with Odysseus's journey. And this also provided an opportunity for the students to connect with Ms. Buchko and allow her to interact with them as well. And as you can see from her response here, she took quite a long time to answer each individual student's questions. Now, a bit um, of criticism here, I would probably have broken this up into separate responses and done an at sign with the student's name rather than one big long block of text. And no matter what country we are in, learning is universal. Learning is something that takes place no matter what area you may live in or how far away you may be. As was evident in this global collaborative project, Ms. Buchko and I and my students all learned from each other and we were not confined by any boundary.